everybody, and welcome into today's podcast. It's September 11th, and uh, of course, the 13th anniversary of 2001, and we all know what happened there. So, of course, uh, our thoughts are with those that are affected by that. But uh, we want to welcome you into the podcast today. Uh, Fox Sports Shoals High School Football. Uh, I'm Mike Ezekiel. I'm here with uh, my guest host today, Florella Sports staff writer and Times Daily Sports correspondent, Matt Selesky. Matt, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. How you doing today? Glad to be here. Hey, glad to have you, Matt. And, um... You know, I want to want you to tell everybody right now about uh, how you came to the Shoals area. I know you're from Mobile, and um, you found your way over to the University of North Alabama and got into high school football. So uh, tell me how you got into it. Well, I played at uh, Murphy High School. It's a 7A high school in Mobile, and uh, football's real big down that way. And so you get to playing down there, and you really like it and enjoy it and kind of go everywhere and you kind of keep following it. And uh, I just came to visit up this way, and I found it to be a beautiful area, so I wanted to Finished my uh, degree this way, and um, so I'm glad to be here. Matt, appreciate you being on the show, and um, appreciate you helping us with the picks today um, with our predictions for Friday night football on Fox Sports Shows. Of course, you can tune in uh, for the Friday night show on um, at 5 o'clock, and it goes on until 7 on 97.9 FM and 1340 AM. Also, the postgame show from 9 to 11. Again, that's Fox Sports Shows, 97.9 FM. Also, you can tune into the blog on foxsportsshows.com. Of course, I'm the blog writer for uh, that. And uh, we got our predictions on there, so check it out. And uh, right quick, we're going to do our own predictions on the podcast today. And uh, the first game we got on tap is a Thursday night game. Florence is going to be traveling over to Coleman. Matt, what do you think about that game? Well, Florence had a big win last week over arch rival Muscle Shoals. Um, Blake Hawkins passed for 225 yards and four touchdowns, and I expect him to keep it rolling this week, so I think they'll go down to Coleman and get a W. Yeah, Florence was very impressive in a stole in a sold out Brawley Stadium Friday night uh, with a big win over Muscle Shoals to start out the region. I think the the way they played against Shades Valley, even though they came up short in the first game, they uh, they look good, and I think that they'll have a good chance to win this game and a good chance to contend for a region spot in the playoff, maybe even a state championship. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. But uh, also another Thursday night game we got on tap. Uh, before we get to that, though, um, let's check out the scores that we got here. Uh, Matt, who did you uh, pick in that game? Russellville, Columbia? No, um, Florence and Coleman. Well, I expect Florence to go down there and get, get the job done. I keep, uh, expect them to keep it rolling, and uh, I think they'll go down and take care of business. Yeah, it looks like you had on um, 24-21, Florence winning that game. And um, my prediction was uh, Florence 38, Coleman 34. So that should be a close game. I think Coleman's a pretty good team, and we'll give Florence a run. Uh, the second game we got is Russellville and Columbia. Uh, Matt, what do you think about that game? Well, Russellville uh, pulled off a big win over J.L. Johnson last week. Marvin Betancourt hit a 26-yard field goal with five seconds to go. So, uh, you know, I'm expecting Russellville to keep it rolling as well. Um, so I think they'll go down to Columbia and, and get a tight win, 24-21. Yeah, Russellville coming off that big win against J.L. Johnson. Johnson is usually one of the top teams in that in that region. They had a great season last season at uh, – I think they got knocked out in the second round of the playoffs, and Russellville getting a big win over Deschler in the first week, and then J.O. Johnson. That's a Russellville's looking like the real deal, and uh, you know I'll be watching for sure to see if uh, Dion Hill has a good game. He's a running back out there. Had a great season so far, and of course Marvin Betancourt getting that field goal that was huge. And um, I think Russellville's going to win this game. Columbia, um, they're one and two on the season. They lost to West Point last week, and uh, they finished last season 1-9, and and they didn't win a region game. So uh, that should be a win for Russellville. Um, I got them winning 48-12. to Matt, what's your prediction? Well, I think uh, I think they'll have their way with them as well. I can see them pulling away 35-10. 35-10, all right. And um, the next game we got is Austin and Muscle Shoals. And, uh, of course, Muscle Shoals, that'll be the game that our Fox Sports Shoals crew will be at this week. Uh, Muscle Shoals in their newly renovated stadium. Um, of course, Landon Smothers last week uh, was 6-for-8 with 101 yards against Florence and a touchdown. Uh, should fare a little better this week. Austin Austin is a pretty good team, though. Austin's 0-3 on the season, but all three of those losses have been within a touchdown. So Austin's a pretty tough team to beat, and that's going to be a pretty good game. What do you think, Matt? Well, I agree with you, Mike. I think Austin's a tough team. They're a very competitive football team, and I know they're looking to get on the, on the scoreboard with a W. Unfortunately, they're playing at Muscle Shoals, and Muscle Shoals is breaking ground on a new stadium this week, and, and I think that the crowd's going to be pumped up and the players will be pumped up, and I just don't see that game going anyway but for a Muscle Shoals victory. But I think Austin will find their way 
to get a win, I just think they're going to have to wait another week to get it. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough. You know, Austin, I don't think they'll, they'll get that win this week against a Muscle Shoals team coming off a of Florence loss, but uh, they're going to be very motivated, I believe, to win this game. I got Muscle Shoals winning 28-24. Matt, what do you think? Um, I don't think it'll be that close. I think as competitive as Austin's been, I think this is the week they fall off a little bit, uh, more because of what Muscle Shoals will do than what Austin will do. So I've got Muscle Shoals 31-17. 31-17. All right. And then um, the next game we got a good 4A, uh, Class 4A Region 8 game, Central Wildcats taking on the Deschler Tigers. Uh, that should be a pretty good game. Matt, what do you think about it? Well, th these are big-time football games here. And, uh, John Ritter, who was the head coach of Red Bay and took him to the playoffs last year, stepped down from his position to take the defensive coordinator spot at Deschler. So he left a smaller school for big games like this. And um, I think you'll have that defense ready. I think their offense will be ready. And I think Central's going to have a hard time going down to Deschler and getting a W. So I'm going to, I'm going to take uh, Deschler in that game 24-10. Okay, and of course, you know, we got um, Jake Linville out there coaching at Deschler. I think Linville's done a great job. I remember being at Wilson when I was there and um, as the defense coordinator. He did an excellent job, and I think he's a great – that was a great hire for Deschler. That's a good coaching staff with Ritter also as a defensive coordinator. A um, couple good quarterbacks for Central and Deschler. Uh, Patrick Langston, of course, for Central in Heath Woods' offense. Um, should be a pretty good uh, game for them. Central, of course, coming off a big win over East Lawrence, getting their first region win, and Deschler beating West Limestone last week. So uh, this game could easily decide who the front runner is and the favorite going into region play. Um, my prediction for that one, I had uh, Deschler winning uh, 35 to 28. It looks like you had um, a little bit of a um, not as close as I did. What do you think? Well, like I said, I think um, I think that defense of Deschler is going to be real tough and. Well, certainly Central's got some offense. And it uh, looked like you had them winning 31-14, to 14, Deschler did. <laughs> All right, well, we'll move on to the next game. Another 4A game, a uh, couple, both teams picking up a win here. Wilson, uh, the Wilson Warriors will be taking on the Elkmont Red Devils. Of course, both teams picking up a big win in 4A Region 8. Um, what do you think about this team? Do you think Elkmont's the real deal? You know, I don't. I, I, um, I think they've gotten to a better start, and I, I think they're definitely doing a lot better than they did last year, but, but they, haven't, they haven't proven it to me yet. I know they got a big win last week over Brooks, and, um, but they almost squandered a big fourth quarter lead. I think Wilson's the real deal, and I think Elkmont's going to definitely pick up a loss this week. So I see Wilson 38-21. Uh, okay, of course, uh, Elkmont last week, um, they um, had, was up 41 to nothing in the third quarter over Brooks, and then uh, Brooks started a comeback there in the fourth quarter and uh, came within a touchdown, 41-35 being the final. Um, I want to talk about Wilson a little bit. Wilson, uh, they're trying to prove a lot of things too. Last year, uh, having a mediocre season, just missing the playoffs, went 5-5. Five and five. But um, I've seen this team progress over you know, a few years, and these seniors are – that's a really good senior class. And I, I believe Wilson's a real deal. I think they are too, Mike, and uh... – I think they'll keep it rolling this week. Yeah, I got uh, I got Wilson winning that one. Um, I picked them to win 41 to 27. I think Elkmont will compete for a little bit, and I think Wilson will pull away in the in the ha final half. Uh, the next game we got on tap is Sheffield and Madison Academy, and uh, I think we pretty much agreed on this game a little bit. Madison Academy is pretty much the favorite to win all of three A. Eh? Of course, they're the defending state champion. Of course, they got a four A prospect, Carryon Johnson, going committed to Auburn, and then a. Uh, but Sheffield, you know, don't count Sheffield out because last week against um, Clements, they uh, got 490 yards of total offense. So, um, Matt, what do you think about that game? Well, with all due respect to Clements, um, 490 yards of offense against that, that defense isn't the most impressive stat, but, but I'm not going to take anything away from Sheffield. They're, they're getting better, and, and that is a lot of offense, and they have a lot to build on. But like you said, Mike, Madison Academy is the defending state champions. They're at home this week. I see them having absolutely no problem with Sheffield. Um, That's definitely a big step up in competition. So I believe Madison Academy will pull away and, and easily win 48 to 10. All right, and I got a Madison Academy win that one, 45 to 13. I think uh, Sheffield, you know, they may come out a little strong in the in the first quarter, and then Madison Academy will probably pull away with that one. But anything could happen because games aren't played on paper. Um, the next game we got is another 4A matchup, West Limestone and Brooks, two teams that are coming off a loss. Of course, Brooks showed their explosiveness in the fourth quarter, scoring 35 on Elkmont. Coming up short, though, uh, West Limestone, their opponent, they lost to Deschler last week 36-9 to and were outscored. On this whole season, they've been outscored by uh, Tanner and uh, East Lawrence. 
or no, it, yeah, East Limestone, 5A school, and um, Brooks, all those. Uh, no, 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 not Brooks. Uh, West Limestone and um, whoever they played last week, Deschler. I just said that. They've been outscored on the season 125-9. to nine. So, um, Matt, what do you think about this game? Do you think West Limestone comes back or do you think Brooks bounces back? Well, um, I don't think West Limestone's going to be bouncing back a whole lot this year. So, you know, I think Brooks, they found what they needed to find in the fourth quarter. They almost pulled off one of the biggest upsets in school history or one of the biggest comebacks in school history. And I think they'll keep that going this week. Um, 35 points uh, between the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Almost came back from a 41-0 second-half deficit. Um, I think they're back at home. They're going to keep that momentum going. I don't think West Limestone's very good this year. So I think Brooks will end up winning this game going away, and I see it 42-7. 42-7. Okay. And then um, I think it's going to be a little closer. I think West Limestone, um, you know, they hadn't been impressive in their first three games, but I think they'll give Brooks a little run for their money. And Brooks, I think they'll bounce back. Brooks is, uh, you know, after that 35-point outbreak, you know, I could I could see them blowing out of that game, but um, I think it's going to be a little closer. I got them winning 21-13. I think it's going to be a little closer. But uh, we'll see as the game goes on. That game could go either way, you know. Depends on which Brooks teams come out, the team that played in the first half or the team that played in the second half. So uh, that'll be interesting to watch. The next game we got Colbert Heights taking on Lauderdale County in a Class 3A Region 8 game. Uh, Lauderdale County, they've been they've been kind of a Jekyll and Hyde kind of team. You know, they you don't know which team's going to come out. Um, you know, they lost to Wilson a couple weeks ago, 28-13, to 13, and then turn around and, uh, you know, the injury bug with them early. Uh, they've had some problems with injuries, but they come back and uh, they get an impressive win last week over Colbert County, which is a huge region win. And now, uh, you know, Colbert Heights also looking for a big win in this one. Who do you think is going to win that one, Matt? Well, I think Coach Bob Grissom will have his guys ready. Uh, I definitely agree with you. They have been Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde this year. You're you're not sure what you're going to get, but they always have a big crowd out there. Their home stadium, and they're at home this week. And, and I think that uh, powerful running game of theirs behind Zach Simbeck will, will be out and about, and I think they'll, they'll get a big win this week. Yeah, Zach Simbeck, he's been very impressive this season. Pretty much carried his team to that win last week, and, uh, of course, he had a lot of help. A lot of, that's a good team, Lardo County. I think uh, that home crowd, that's a good atmosphere. Their team is always behind them. I've always noticed that. Yeah, I think uh, Lardo County will come out and win this game. I got them winning this one 34-13, to 13, and I think we agreed on that game, actually. I think we picked the exact same score, so how about that? That don't happen very often, but um, <laughs> so I, I can't take bragging rights over this one. But. <laughs> hey, we'll just wait till Saturday, and we'll find out who gets it. <laughs> All right, the next game we got on tap is uh, another 4A game. Uh, East Lawrence taking on Rogers. Both teams coming off losses. But um, I, I like Rogers. I've been to a couple of their games this year. Rogers is, is very improved from last year. They went 1-9 and nine last year, kind of a rebuilding year. But Coach Martin, I think, has done a great job out there. And um, they're physical, and I think they're improving. They gave uh, Wilson a good run for their money. And um, I think they're going to win this game against East Lawrence. But... Uh, you know, behind the legs of Tristan Daly and Tiki Harvey, two running backs that are impressive. Matt, what do you think? Well, I'm in agreement with you here. I believe uh, behind the running backs, they'll get a lot of a lot of yards on the ground, and I think they'll pound out a, a big win over East Lawrence. Yeah, um, I got uh, Rogers winning this one, 31 to 21, and uh, you picked a pretty close game on this one. Rogers 13, East Lawrence 12. That's that's a pretty close game there, but. Well, I think that uh, there's gonna be no, not much passing attack from Rogers and. I think East Lawrence will stack the box on them this week and I think they can have a little success, but ultimately I think that they'll find a way to ground to a win at home. Right, right. I agree with you on that one. Uh, the next game we got here um, on tap, Colbert County will be uh, traveling over to West Morgan. Colbert County looking to bounce back after that loss to Lauderdale County last week, 26-7. to Colbert County has a pretty good team. Tyler Jeffries over there at quarterback, which is Coach Dale Jeffries' son. And then uh, Tobias Qualls, of course, the wide receiver there, key player in that in that machine and um, of course that touchdown against Tanner he had to put the overtime victory for them. Colbert County's been impressive but um you know traveling to West Morgan or a solid team with high hopes. Matt you think they'll bounce back this week? I do think they'll bounce back. I'm not sure. They haven't shown so far they're quite as good as they were last year. But I still think they're a solid football team year in and year out and I think after that loss last week at Lauderdale County They'll be ready to go, and I think they'll go on the road and get a W. I agree with you there, Matt. And uh, I got this game. Uh, Colbert County is definitely going to bounce back. I got them winning 45 to two, and it uh, looks like Matt, you got them winning 31 to 13. Looks like a. 
Well, I think that West Morgan's going to be able to get a little more in the safety. But um, <laughs> but I don't think they'll have a lot of trouble, and I think they'll find a way to get a win. And um, and um, I think their home crowd will, will give them a chance to play a little little bit competitive, but I just think they're too outmatched. Well, uh, West Morgan, they've yet to score this season. They're 0-2. They lost to Priceville a couple weeks ago, 44 to nothing, And then, of course, they played Madison Academy 53 to nothing. So that's a, that's a pretty tough matchup. But uh, maybe uh, West Morgan will... Uh, come out a little better against uh, Cobber County, get a big region win. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, the next game is another uh, 3A, uh, Class 3A Region 8 game. Lexington is going to be taking on Clements. And um, Lexington, I've been to a couple, one of their games, and uh, I think you've seen Clements play a couple times. Lexington, they're pretty hot right now. They're undefeated. They got an explosive offense, are great on special teams. And uh, three of their key players, Wes Shirley, Tristan Clark, and Dakota Saint, they've been key to that offense and defense. They play both ways. That's a pretty good team, Lexington. They may uh, contend for a playoff spot. How do you think it's going to win this one, Matt? Well, I think this um, be a note. I don't think this will be close here. I like Lexington big. I think they'll go on the road to Clement and get a win. I think uh, you get the ball in Dakota St. Sands. He's instant offense. He can do anything from anywhere at any time. And um, I just don't think Clements has the horses to play with him. I see Lexington big, 70 to six. 70 to six, wow. That's a, that's a lot of offense there. Um, yeah, that that may actually happen. I got um, I got Lexington fifty six to seven over Clements. I think Clements will score one, but uh, <laughs> Lexington they are explosive. Um, a lot of impressive wins for them. Of course, they beat Shoals Christian and Mars Hill fifty six to six and fifty six to seven respectively, and then of course getting a big win over Colbert Heights forty four to twenty. So the Golden Bears may be the real deal. And uh, I've heard a lot of their fans talking about Madison Academy in Week Ten. <laughs> they got a lot of hopes there. So well, they got a long way to go for that game. Uh, Madison Academy is the the best in the business in, in that class, but but Lexington's on the rise. They're explosive, and they continue to get better. Who knows? I think I like what Coach Jason Lard's doing there. I think uh, he's done a great job there. And uh, of course, the defensive coordinator there, uh, Coach Taylor Leathers, uh, he was my defensive coordinator in high school, and um, I think he's doing a great job with that defense as well. They they're swarming to the ball. So we'll, we'll see how Lexington fares in that game. The game I have after that, uh, R.A. Hubbard in a Class 1A game will be taking on Shoals Christian. Uh, Shoals Christian, uh, I think you went to one of their games and I went to one. And, um, you know, they, they've, they're winless so far. They, uh, they had a heartbreaking loss last week to Decatur Heritage. But um, I, was, I was pretty impressed with Tanner Bozeman. You know, the, he's a short quarterback, but uh, he, he did a great job, of course, completing some screen passes, making some drives in the game I went to against Lexington. But... Uh, you know, I see Shells Christian coming along, and um, we'll see how this game goes. What do you think, Matt? Well, that's the game I'll be at Friday night, uh, Mike, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if they can't continue to improve a little bit. Um, Tanner Bozeman, he um, he's he's gotten a lot better, and and and, and they, they they struggle with the running game, and so they kind of throw that bubble screen out there, and that's kind of how they keep the running game going. Uh, they don't line up and pound it very very hard, but but uh, I still think they have a long way to go, and. Um, I noticed they also have a lot of penalties, and a team like that, they, they need to make sure they're going in the right direction, not going backwards. So I think Ari Hubbard's going to go in there and get a win. I think Shoals Christian's still a, a ways away from really breaking through and getting a W. Even though I think they're on the right track, I still don't think they're ready this week. So I'll take Ari Hubbard in the win. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, man. I think Ari Hubbard, they're going to bounce back. Of course, last week, Ari Hubbard lost a big game to Phillips, 26-13. to And uh, Phillips is on the rise in that region. Ari Hubbard. Usually the top dog in that region, but I think they'll bounce back and get the win over Shoals Christian. I got them winning twenty six to twelve, and Matt, you got them winning thirty eight to six. So. Yeah, yeah, I think that's just, like I said. I think they're still a long way away, and um, I think they're gonna have a hard time this week. So, uh, but but like I said, that they're continuing to improve, and, and maybe down the road, maybe a win will be in their future. Uh, let's see, well, we'll see about that. And um, up to this point, we've we picked twelve games and we've agreed on all of them as far as who's going to win. The scores may be a little different, but uh, we did have agreed on who wins. But these these last two games, a two A matchup and a one A matchup, we we kind of disagreed on and and uh, you know you like to switch it up a little bit, like to and like to pick different sometimes. But um, the the next game we got Cherokee Class Two A taking on Tharp Town, and uh, that'll be of course uh, in Russellville at Tharp Town. Uh, Cherokee is winless on the season. And um, I think both teams will probably need this win in two A region play to you know catapult them. So uh, Matt, who you got in this game? Well, I'm. Uh, they're both winless, and like I said, I'm. I like Cherokee here. I um I was I covered the Cherokee Red Bay game last week, and um, while Red Bay beat them 55 to 20, it was 48 nothing in the third quarter, and I saw some of the skilled guys from Cherokee uh, really make some big plays in that fourth quarter, and I, I think they'll. 
think they'll kind of build on that. And I don't think Darktown is uh, is the most talented team this year. And I think they're both trying to get a win. But but I like what I saw out of Cherokee, and I think their skill players might be too much. So I like them in a close ball game. Sounds like you changed your mind a little bit on that one. I think uh, we was talking this week. You said uh, you know you may like Tharptown in that one, and then kind of changed it up a little bit. I think Cherokee is a Cherokee is a good team. I think uh, I think Cherokee will win that game as well. So I guess we did agree on that one. But I was thinking you like Tharptown. <laughs> well, you know, I, when when you watch the first three quarters, forty-eight nothing. Um, you know, it's hard to pick that team. But the more I thought about it, the more I saw a little film, the more I said, okay, this Cherokee team, they've got some things they can build on and. And while I don't know much about Tharptown, uh, I think Cherokee skill players are going to be a little too much for them. And I agree with you, Matt, on that one. I got, I got it to be in a close game. I think it's going to be 20 to 14, and Cherokee's going to barely pull it out. I've got a Cherokee 21-20. Good deal, good deal. And I agree with you on that one, Matt. And uh, the final game we got, and I think we did disagree on this one, Decatur Heritage taking on Waterloo. And uh, both teams really need this win. Um, Decatur Heritage coming off that big win over Shoals Christian. Um, you know, nobody really expected Decatur Heritage to win that game. And then Waterloo, of course, being winless, they probably need this win this week. And this is a good opportunity for Waterloo to get it. You think they'll get the win this week? You know, I do think Waterloo. I, I know you're on the other side of this, but um, Decatur Heritage had to fight real hard to, to get past a Shoals Christian team that, that I th think still has a long way to go. And, and I think Waterloo's at home, and, and neither team are going to have a lot of Ws this year. And I think this is where Waterloo gets theirs. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I think, you know, Waterloo may have a chance to win that game, but, of course, I'm going the other way as far as uh, who's going to win that game. Decatur Heritage, I believe, you know, coming off that momentous win, a monumental win over uh, Shells Christian, I think they'll have a little bit of momentum going into Waterloo. And um, I, I honestly think they're the better team in this one. So I got Decatur Heritage winning that one 25 to th or 28 to 13. So I think it will be a close game. Waterloo will compete. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll maybe they would do something in that one. So, Matt, I uh, appreciate you being on the show today. We had some good picks. Uh, only one that's different. So, uh, I guess we'll find out who, who, who had the better picks just off that one game. So, <laughs> it all rides on that one. Yeah, well, um, I expect to get the W over, over you this week. So, uh, <laughs> so, I'm really counting on Waterloo to get, get through for me. So, you're going to come take my job. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> Well, we're no experts here. You know, maybe you, but not me. I'm no expert on this. So, uh, of course, uh, appreciate y'all listening today to the podcast. Of course, Jay Lisa in the studio with us. She's the producer of Fox Sports Shoals. She does a great job. Appreciate her being in the studio with us today. And, again, I want to thank Matt Selesky for being with us today, the Florida sports writer and uh, Times Daily correspondent. And before we go, I want to give a shout-out to all those Times Daily guys. They do a great job corresponding to those games. That's a great crew they got. Yeah, they, they do do a great job, and uh, Mike also corresponds a little bit as well, so he's being a little humble over there, but but absolutely, <laughs> they do a great job, and uh, thank you so much for having me today, Mike. I really enjoyed it. Yes, sir. Matt, thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it.